You know, in the military, they give medals to people who are willing to sacrifice themselves so that others may gain. In business, we give bonuses to people who are willing to sacrifice others so that we may gain. Yeah, back. Right? What I learned is that it's the environment. And if you get the environment right, every single one of us has the capacity to do these remarkable things. And more importantly, others have that capacity too. I've had the great honor of getting to meet some of these who we would call heroes, who've put themselves and put their lives at risk to save others. And I asked them, why would you do it? Why did you do it? And they all say the same thing, because they would have done it for me. It's this deep sense of trust and cooperation. So trust and cooperation are really important here. The problem with concepts of trust and cooperation is that they are feelings. They're not instructions. I can't simply say to you, trust me, and you will. I can't simply instruct two people to cooperate, and they will. It's not how it works. It's a feeling. So where does that feeling come from? If you go back 50,000 years to the Paleolithic era, to the early days of Homo sapien, what we find is that the world was filled with danger. And so we evolved into social animals, where we live together and work together in what I call a circle of safety, inside the tribe, where we felt like we belong. And when we felt safe amongst our own, the natural reaction was trust and cooperation. The modern day is exactly the same thing. The world is filled with danger, things that are trying to frustrate our lives or reduce our success, reduce our opportunity for success. We have no control over these forces. These are a constant, and they're not going away. The only variable are the conditions inside the organization. And that's where leadership matters, because it's the leader that sets the tone. When a leader makes the choice to put the safety and lives of the people inside the organization first, to sacrifice their comforts and sacrifice the tangible results so that the people remain and feel safe and feel like they belong, remarkable things happen. I was flying on a trip, and I was witness to an incident, and I watched the gate agent treat this man like he had broken the law, like a criminal. He was yelled at for attempting to board one group too soon. She said, sir, if I don't follow the rules, I could get in trouble or lose my job. All she was telling me is that she doesn't feel safe. All she was telling me is that she doesn't trust her leaders. The reason we like flying Southwest Airlines is not because they necessarily hire better people, it's because they don't fear their leaders. You see, if the conditions are wrong, we are forced to expend our own time and energy to protect ourselves from each other. And that inherently weakens the organization. When we feel safe inside the organization, we will naturally combine our talents and our strengths and work tirelessly to face the dangers outside and seize the opportunities. The closest analogy I can give to what a great leader is, is like being a parent. If you think about what being a great parent is, what do you want? What makes a great parent? We want to give our child opportunities, education, discipline them when necessary, all so that they can grow up and achieve more than we could for ourselves. Great leaders want exactly the same thing. They want to provide their people opportunity, education, discipline when necessary, build their self-confidence, give them the opportunity to try and fail, all so that they could achieve more than we could ever imagine for ourselves.